Last time, you saw our crossing that was filled with electronic gremlins. This time, we explore the unique place called Ascension Island. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life oh. Located approximately halfway between Africa and South America, Ascension Island is a multinational communications and military hub that forms part of the British Overseas Territory of St. Helena, Ascension, and Tristan da Cunha. It is just 34 square miles, most of it barren volcanic rock. Green Mountain is the highest point at 859 meters, or 2,817 feet. It was once also barren, but today is covered with lush, dense vegetation. The United States government built the airfield in 1942. It was an important part of World War II. In 1957, it became the testing ground for long-range military missiles. And today, it is now a tracking station for intercontinental ballistic and space missiles. Any visit to Ascension Island starts with obtaining an electronic visa. You will be required to show evidence of health insurance that includes a minimum of 500,000 pounds for medical evacuation by air. Due to all of the construction equipment used to transport gravel from a ship in the bay to the runway construction project, Port Control asked us to use the ferry instead of our own personal dinghy to access the island. Customs and Immigration is an office at the jetty, and it was very quick and efficient. The first place you should go is to see Sue at the Saints Club. She is very friendly and will help with anything you need on the island. This is the Saints Club. It is the closest place to walk from the dock, from the jetty there, just a, know, a few hundred meters up the hill for uh, drinks and food, quite quiet. Currently, John and I are the only yachties on Ascension. There is a presentation today by the Vessel Discovery, which is a large research ship I don't know really who it's run by yet, but they're doing, oh, look at these kids' drawings. They're doing research about a deep ocean. We saw them traversing some seamounts. We assumed it was a fishing vessel. We didn't actually see the vessel. We saw the boat on AIS. And this is what we're here to see, exploring the deep. And here's where she came from. We saw her traversing the Groton Seamount and the Young Seamount as we were coming from St. Helena. Bay there. Um, it's a research vessel that's come down from Southampton. It's on its way now to St. Helena and it's been exploring our green protected area and it's been amazing, hasn't it? So we designated a green protected area around the island in 2019. That covers the whole of Ascension, so it's called EZ, so the area of water that we have control over. That goes out to 200 nautical miles from the island. It's a big 445,000 square kilometres, so it's huge. So we've used a really wide range of gears and types of different kind of methods. We've been sampling water profiles, we've been mapping the sea bed, we've been dra dragging nets, like this one here, through the water 
to sample the kind of small, small plankton, the fishes, and squids, and uh, crustaceans that Molly and James will show you. And we've been putting uh, deep sea traps at the bottom to collect uh, scavengers from the very deepest areas of the water, you know, 3,000 meters deeper. And we've also been deploying the pelagic cameras for drugs. So everything that we've collected, it's uh, going to be used. So what I'm going to do is take everything back to the Natural History Museum. And we're going to double check some of the identifications. And then it will all be available for scientists all over the world to, to come and study. So everything will get databased. It will then be put online. And we'll publicize everything that we've got. We'll talk about anything that's particularly interesting. I've got some good fish contacts all over the world. So if I find something, I know just the person who wants to. Oh, yeah, we've got a few examples of things along to show you. We've got some lantern fish and hatchet fish, and one of my favorite specimens there, a, a viper fish, which has got a, This is, I think, this has got the biggest tooth to skull ratio of any animal in the world. Its teeth are so huge. We want to make sure that ascension is a haven for these animals, for these species, and also an example for the rest of the world. Yeah, there aren't many places like Ascension where we haven't already messed it up. Um, we can use this as, as, as a sort of baseline to show the rest of the world what they should be aiming for. How did this once barren mountain become this lush green environment? The story goes all the way back to Charles Darwin and his visit to Ascension in 1836 aboard the HMS Beagle. He was only on Ascension for three days, but he wrote extensively about the island and its arid environment. Seven years later, Sir Joseph Hooker arrived on Ascension, and in hopes of trapping the constant trade winds and their moisture, he put forward a plan that he believed would increase rainfall, prevent erosion, and provide more food for the military. This plan was to begin the importation of various plant species from around the world and start planting them high up Green Mountain. There is no proof that it actually brought more rainfall, but it sure made for a beautiful mountain. Here we are at the NASA site. Clearly it's been abandoned. This site was used during the lot during the moon landing back in the 60s there was communication to and from here I'm not sure all of the details so I will look it up and get you more details so we're gonna walk around Ascension Island holds an interesting place in NASA history in 1967 the agency established a tracking station for Apollo and other space flight programs. Later, the lengthy runway at the island's airstrip became a backup landing site for the space shuttle. Most recently, NASA installed a meteor-class autonomous telescope near the airstrip. The powerful optical telescope is used to track orbital debris that could pose a risk to spacecraft. One of the interesting people I met at the Saints Club is a traveling nurse. She stationed on Ascension Island for six months. She invited me to go with some of her friends and take a hike to Mars Bay and Shelly Beach. The first part of the hike, you cross through the nesting grounds of the Sooty Tern. It is estimated there are approximately 200,000 pairs of these birds. Eventually, the trail takes a turn and you hike up and over an enormous lava flow. The other side of that lava flow, you find Mars Bay and Sandy Beach. At the far end of Sandy Beach are tide pools. They are landlocked at the surface, but have a deep underground connection to the sea. Within these pools live two species of shrimp found nowhere else on Earth. The limited connection with the sea encourages unique species like the shrimp and this single cell algae.
On Thanksgiving Day, we visited two beaches, Comfortless Cove and English Bay. English Bay is home to a large consortium of salty lightfoot crabs. They are rumored to have been named after a Caribbean dancer due to their agility in jumping from rock to rock, their ability to run in four directions, and their capacity to climb up vertical slopes. This extreme agility makes them very difficult to catch. The beaches are beautiful here, and the water is warm and clear, but they ask you not to swim due to some aggressive shark activity. The last shark attack was in 2017, but they still see some aggressive behavior. So out of an abundance of caution, they are asking people to stay out of the water. Typically, I wouldn't let that stop me. But remember, we are very isolated and there is very little emergency medical available and almost no emergency medevac if you really need it. These are the turtle ponds. Since Ascension was a provisioning stop back in the day, these ponds were built in 1815 and were used to keep live turtles so that passing ships could easily take them on board to provide fresh meat. Now it's time to move on, so we fill up the tanks with diesel and make a quick stop at the grocery store. Next time, come with us as we depart Ascension and sail to Cabadelo, Brazil.